Fans of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game are currently freaking out because Gun Interactive, the developer behind the game, have released their pricing plan for future content. And some fans have even gone as far as to say that this could kill the game. Now, obviously, a little bit of context is needed, so let's get into it. So the game was released about a month and a half ago, which is insane because it feels like this game has been out for ages, especially when you consider how many people have already put hundreds of hours into the game and reached the maximum player level. And last week, Gun Interactive announced the first bit of new content that they're releasing, which was a brand new Leatherface skin designed by SFX horror icon, Greg Nicotero. Now, for those of you who don't know who he is, you'll probably know him the best from The Walking Dead. He designed the zombies in that. He's designed so many iconic horror things. You'd probably know his work without necessarily knowing it was him. And by the way, I do apologize if I pronounce his name wrong. Please don't grill me in the comments for that. So Gun Interactive and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game have worked with him to create a new Leatherface skin. But not only that, to be fair, they've also announced a universal signature kill, and an exclusive saw which has a new sound. Isn't that fancy? But this announcement, even though it is really cool, by the way, I really like this mask. This is really cool. Apparently this here is meant to be a mouth hole. You can see the nose here and the mouth hole and he's using it as an eyepiece. Maybe a hot take, but I really like the skin. But all of it was overshadowed by this, this price tag here that you can see, $16, which will buy you all three of these things. And many people were quick to point out that this was kind of steep. It was a kind of steep price tag, especially when a week before we had the Resident Evil 4 DLC separate ways, which was priced at $9.99 or $7.99 if you're British like me. Compare that with, with $16 or about £13. And you can kind of see that they just, they just don't add up together. You know, if you compare those two, it does seem really steep. And so off the back of that, Gun Interactive decided to release their pricing structure for future content, which looks a little bit like this. Now you can read this for yourself, of course, but I am gonna go over a few things which were talked about in the replies of this post, which clarified a few little points about each of the tiers. So to start with, we have premium content, which is like the Nicotero uh, leather face masks and everything that comes with it, classed as premium content. So I think going forward, premium content is probably going to be either bundles or instances where they work with an exterior artist or horror icon in some fashion. That's my guess. And then next up, we have characters, which is priced at $9.99. And it says victims and family. But the thing to note here is that means victims is $9.99 for a new character and family is $9.99 for a new character. So let's say they release... I don't know, a tie-in to the newest Texas Chainsaw Massacre film that was on Netflix, Pilot Dog Shit, by the way. Don't come at me in the... It's Pilot... I, we move on. If they release the killer of that, which was obviously Leatherface, if they release like uh, that version of the character with the survivor who was in that film, they would each be $9.99 each. Executions are going to be $6.99. These are the animations that you get while you're playing as killer. And then cosmetics, which is clothing and weapons, will be $4.99 with all free content being free, surprisingly enough. And how have people reacted to this? Well, to be honest, it's been kind of 50-50 from what I've seen. But the thing is, is that the people who don't like it are screaming much louder than the people who do like it and aren't really bothered by the pricing structure. We've had a lot of people who have been actually really annoyed by it. And listen, I don't mean to call out Linksy in particular, okay? Because I like her content and she's not the only person who's saying this, but this is just the first one I found. People are saying that these prices could kill the game. It feels like at this point, we're just looking for things to kill the game. You know, like it all feels like we're almost looking for excuses as to what's gonna kill the game. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more later, but spoiler alert, I don't think this is gonna kill the game. I wanna go over some pros and cons though of this pricing list and how people have reacted to it and what could be, you know, the fallout of it all. So let's start with the pros because I've been told that I need to be more positive. So the first pro to talk about is the fact that they're being transparent, which is awesome. There is lately been feeling like there's this real divide between game developers and the players of their games and almost like they're on separate teams in a weird way and like they, they argue a lot. But it's really nice to see that they're being transparent and trying to be as open as possible from the get-go. The second pro that I saw was 
clearly these guys have faith in whatever content they have planned. To put the pricing out, first of all, and then to put the pricing probably higher than most people expected, all that says to me is that they clearly think that they've got some bangers in the works. You know, they've got some th some things lined up which are really going to be worth those price tags. Makes me kind of excited. I can't lie. It makes me excited to see what they turn out. The next thing isn't really a pro as such, but just something to note, which is this kind of thing is industry standard. Battle passes and skins to buy and all these kind of things have become very, very commonplace in today's gaming industry. I don't think it's uncommon to find characters or skins in other games that you have to pay like $10 for, for a skin, by the way. I mean, these guys are charging half of that. And then the final pro, which I wanted to talk about, is the fact that this will keep the game running. The thing about these kind of asymmetrical horror games, these games which you buy once and then can play forever, they have a high replayability, is that once a player has paid for it, a lot of the time you can have no more money coming from that player, but you've still got to keep the game running for that player. If we're thinking about it as like a single player, obviously it's a bigger picture than that, but if you think about it on a single person, they can just pay once and then never do anything else again. And I think a lot of people forget that about game development is the fact that it's a business, you know, that they've got to earn money, they've got to pay their employees, they've got to pay their bills. It's not just about creating a game and being creative and releasing it and being like, yeah, cool, now we don't have to think about it. They still have to pay things. And so they need money coming in. So those are the pros that I've seen, the major things that are good or necessary about this pricing list. Now let's move on to the cons because I know I've been told to be more positive, but let's be honest, the cons are more fun, all right? That, they're, they're just more fun, it's more fun to shit on things. I'm not the only one who thinks that, okay? Good Lord, let's move on. So the first thing to talk about is the fact that the base game was really expensive. I'm not gonna lie, I paid 35 pound, uh, or I think it's $40 uh, in, in America. 35 pound is a lot of money. It's probably one of, if not the most expensive one that I've personally paid for and that I, I have seen on the market. So I think a lot of people are bothered by the fact that they paid so much money just to get the game and now they're being hit with this pricing list which looks pretty chunky when you first look at it and don't really think too much about it. It can be a bit disconcerting, a bit worrying, and it's no surprise really, you know, there's a cost of living crisis happening right now. A lot of people have had to cut finances across the board and they just don't have this kind of money to invest into such a small thing within a game that has a massive impact, which is the next con we're gonna be talking about. There is a huge issue at the moment in Texas Chainsaw in regards to lobby dodging. Now, I've actually only just recently started playing this game, like last week. I was a late bloomer to the party, right? But straight away, I encountered the issue that when I loaded in as a, as a family member, I, I couldn't fucking not be Leatherface because no one wants to be Leatherface. It would get to the point where I was having standoffs with the other people in the party because they wanted to be Sissy and Johnny and I would be sat there like, well, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be freaking Bubba again. And I'd, I'd have to be, I'd have to be Bubba because otherwise the game ain't going to start. I'm ranting, I'm sorry, but it's annoying. And so people are just dipping out of the lobbies if they don't get their way. If they don't get the character they want, they're like, well, fuck you, I'll leave then. And then the lobby doesn't start because there's not enough players and you just spend most of your time actually waiting for a game rather than playing a game. And this pricing list is going to accentuate that issue. Because say, for example, later down the line, they release a new cosmetic or a new thing, whatever it is, for Leyland. Now, everyone who has put the money into buying that for Leyland is going to want to play Leyland, which is understandable. But then no one's going to want to play anyone else. And you're going to get these people who, if they don't get to play Leyland, are just going to dodge the lobby again. And the people who are going to suffer the most off the back of that, ironically, are the people who aren't paying the money to buy the new things. Because they're not going to care which character they load in as, they just want to play the game. But honestly, I think the biggest con, the biggest issue with this pricing plan is the fact that currently it is the only way that Gun Interactive have planned for new things to be introduced or earned in the game for players. All right, so there was a tweet which was a little bit worrying for me, which was this. So somebody asked, will there be an alternative way to earn new characters in the game? And Texas Chainsaw Massacre replied, we do not have any alternate methods to earn and unlock characters, but we'll submit that as feedback to the team. Now this says to me that this isn't even really on their radar. It's not something that they 
are thinking about or think is necessary to work on. Because I think what is going to happen there is you're going to really alienate the possible players who will become dedicated to your game who physically don't have the money to put into it. This is the benefit of things like battle passes, which I know you have to pay for, but you pay once and you can earn a bunch of stuff. Or things like in-game currency, which you earn through leveling up or doing mini challenges inside the game. You know, things that you can grind out, essentially. I can only speak on my experience. I can only speak on my viewpoint on it, right? So I'm going to use my viewpoint and maybe this will resonate with some people. As someone who's only just gotten started in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm currently achievement hunting for it. So there will be a point where I earn the platinum trophy for the game. At that point, I'm probably going to be done with the game. I'm probably just going to leave it alone. Even though I could still keep playing afterwards, what's the point? What's the point? Because all I'm going to do is reach the max player level at some point, which is going to take ages because XP grinding in that game is fucking horrendous. But then after that, there's there's nothing from what I can see or what is currently planned and announced. The only way that I will get new content is if I put more money into it. But I don't want to do that. So with no new content to earn in any other way, nothing else in the game that I can unlock as I go forth, I'll just be done with the game. And if a lot of people share that viewpoint, that's when the player base is going to start dwindling. And I think that's what people mean when they say this will kill the game. I've already said that I don't think this is going to kill the game. In fact, I don't actually think the pricing itself is the issue, really. I think that all of these other issues that are occurring around the game have just accentuated the pricing structure as something to focus on. There will obviously be people who will pay this money. All right, we've seen people invest thousands into, into Fortnite, Rocket League, Warzone, Dead by Daylight. Yes, I brought it up. I'm sorry, but it's true. Like people pay this stuff to games because they're dedicated to them, because they love them. Having content that you have to pay for is fine, obviously, but there needs to be other stuff as well for the people who just can't physically afford to open their wallets. And that's the base issue that I think needs to be worked on here. But of course, I'm interested to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that this pricing is too steep? Will you be someone who is happy to pay it? Which side of the conversation do you fall onto? Let me know. And of course, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel for more gaming and streaming news and also to make me smile and not make me cry. Subscribe or I'll cry. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Go out there and be the best damn crunks that you can be. And I will see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye for now. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up, I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crap.